Yes. Do you have any? Um, can, is there any left of that? No, you finished it. Look at it. Oh crap! No. Uh, nah. Shall I get another drink? What drink is it? Uh, Coke. Yes. Any yeah, Coke? Grab it. Simply. Brad, should I get you another drink? Oh, Welcome to the common room. Is it it, of the one, literally, we just jump straight. When it's record, recording, just can you say three, two, one, so we know. Oh, it's been recording. Oh, is it? Like my bad. My bad. You tell us, boy. Yeah, my bad. yeah, we it's weren't, good. We weren't That's ready. Fine. This is good. This is good. We weren't got ready. Got a couple of jokes in there, so it's good. Okay, but seriously, are we getting some coke? Huh? Yeah, I'll get some coke. Yeah, can you get some coke then? Mate? Oh, we'll yeah, like yeah, the the stuff we mean now. The sniffing stuff. Now. Yeah. Oh, what, 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 hold on, what do you mean? <laughs> we're talking about the Colombian... Yeah. Cocaine. Cocaine. We're, here, we're here for a good time, not a long time, so... Yes. Skedaddle. You don't want to remember today, basically. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm why? sorry. You have to say, okay. why are you getting flunked up? FBI. FBI. Female. I'm body inspector. <laughs> oh, wait, isn't that what we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... For the past okay. what, month or two, there's been obviously a lot of memes on FBI. Yeah, I didn't actually yeah. see. I only saw them when you showed me today. Okay, really? so there's one that we were discussing earlier. It's a picture of a Bollywood actress looking kind of sheepish and like embarrassed and shy, whatever. Yeah, and the, the caption, yeah, with the but yeah, basically, it's basically like a um, a love song, and I think we all know. Like, anyways, um, so the caption said, "When the FBI agent um, has seen you without your hijab, and now he has to marry you." <laughs> <laughs> so there's been loads of memes like that going around and they're all quite hilarious but should we be more concerned about normalising surveillance what do you guys think the thing is we live in a society where no you know what really weirds me out is everyone's got an iPhone everyone's got Snapchat we can literally take 1080p 4k videos mm. and photos but yet CCTV in um... that's only because that's only because of how widely circulated they are there's CCTV in every corner. You can't just install a 4K camera at the corner of the road. You'd have to do it for every single one, and that would cost billions of like pounds. That's, true. That's why they don't have it. But you're right. Though. It would be it amazing. Needed. That, it would be it's needed. I saw it someone, I can't remember which comedian it was. I think it was Trevor Noah. He was saying, not Trevor Noah, someone, how if you like park your car in the wrong place, you literally get a letter sent to your house straight away. <laughs> yeah, it was, it like, was Paul Chowdhury, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, stab someone, do it on a bus lane. That way, you get the perpetrator will be caught straight away. It's true. It's definitely true. <laughs> so get, the best place to get stabbed is in the bus lane. You'll get a letter the next day. You'll get a letter the next day. Yeah, saying that's so true. Where it happened? A uh, little picture as well. Yeah. Like, remember, yeah. remember when he got caught speeding, and they sent a letter to his house. Obviously, the, the original thing was saying, no, that wasn't me. That wasn't me driving. Yeah. But then he was like, I can't really deny it. You can see my face. <laughs> face it, yeah. <laughs> it was so big that it was me. <laughs> like, like, literally, you can tell what the colours, what the colour of the person's eyes are. Oh, my God. I, well, I got done in um, Wanstead. I get, no, when it's Wanstead, Walthamstow. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, I got done. No, no, no. No, I got, <laughs> no, I got done in Walthamstow for a thing, uh, sitting in a yellow box. <laughs> oh, a junction box. Yeah, and then... You couldn't tell it was me. I was severe, like, I was actually gonna, that's not me, fam. It wasn't even my car either. <laughs> but, um, no, I was like, listen, I'll, I'll pay it. Should shall I get the coke? What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, get some coke. <laughs> <laughs> right, get us some coke. Today in the studio, we have a fourth guest. What's it's a mango. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are we passing that? Are we passing that around? But the person is allowed to talk. Yeah, let's do it's that. It's actually What's really heavy mango that I've been carrying around all day. What, where is it from? Why have you been carrying from around? my house? Yeah, but no, I mean, where is it originally? It's from? Mango's you don't day out. The mango, did you? No, I just had it was in my kitchen. And I just thought I'm gonna. This mango deserves a day. Yeah, I got it for dessert. Well, I did. Is it? Is it packy? It's honestly, it's is ripe. It a packy? What does that mean? I like the packies. <laughs> well, packy mangoes. <laughs> what? No, it's, is it a packy mango? It's from Tesco. No, I no, think, no. I don't know. Could be from Asda. Could be from Asda, I don't know. Is it from the EU or not? I don't know, it was in my kitchen. What, is it from the EU, did you say? Brexit, man, Brexit. <laughs> oh, we're in the sport of that, right? Yeah. Hang on, what about the thing <laughs> about changing the passport colours? Remember it's going from... It's blue. No, it's happening, it's happening. It is happening, October, October 2019. Yeah, but isn't it a bit weird that the company that is doing it... It's a French company! Yeah, but they have a British name, but yet the 
company that was already people, doing it. A lot it, of people aren't happy about it because they're like, why should um, why is it not a British company that's going to mm. do it? It doesn't really matter who does our passports. It's like it's not that deep, right? Is it deep? What is it? I want Britain to be British about British. I want Britain to be. I want Britain to be about British. British. (laughs) Who said that? British. British values. Ah. Oh my god, you're so good at it. You're from Scotland. We're all from Scotland. That is so good. Mine's Billy. So good. So good. Hargus. No, you're really bad. You're really bad at Scotland. Hargus. Really, I tried to do really it. I tried. I tried. Basically, what I think of when I do a Scottish accent. Yeah, Alex oh. Ferguson. A wee bit. Sue. Sue, Alex Ferguson. Alex Ferguson. Sue, a wee Alex bit. A wee bit. A wee bit. A wee bit. When you, when wee you, bit. you, do you know how you speak? A wee laddie. What a bunch of Scots. When I went to Glasgow, when I went to Glasgow, I saw a lot of you. Scottish You're just from, from Manchester, mate. I'm from Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Bristol. <laughs> I'm from Bristol. That's from not Bristol. how Bristolian sound. Russell Howard's Bristolian. That's not how right, let's, 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 get, <laughs> let's get to let's get to what we're talking about. Let's start again. <clears throat> right. Does anybody who eats spicy food get heartburn? Comment below. <laughs> no, it's a real thing. Yeah. I get heartburn. Oh, as in, I'm saying, comment. Like, yeah. Your question. That's how it sounded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Do you guys have the question? You need a meprazole. Let's get a, a meprazole and then. A meprazole. Yes. <clears throat> What's that? That's for gas, not. I'm not gassy. Actually, Gavis I'm Gavis not farting. Gavis gone. Let's get Gavis gone. Would you be put off if your wife wife farts in front of you? Of course not. You wouldn't be put I'll off. I'll compete, you know. How long? How long? I'll what, be like, yeah, what, you're what's, not what's farting. What's the. Me? the um, so, like, is there a grace period? Would you want, like, after a certain amount of time f- to be that uh, comfortable with each other? Or are you, like, from the get-go, you're like, yeah, let's fart away, let's work away? I don't mind. The reason why I don't mind is because... Imagine, you're going to fart on, like... Imagine... I would be farting on the first date. Like, you, know, you know, there's that bit where they... <laughs> Ruksati, when it happened, they... In Guru, where I was, I... What's so the Ruksati? Listen, we're Bengali, we don't know what the, this means. Yeah, the thing, Abid. The sending off. So, the father... The Bidai? The Bidai, the bidai, bidai is what you mean. The Bidai, bidai is what you mean. Bidai. <laughs> what was that? Um, um, so, when the father's bowling is like, imagine like that little grace period only lasts like four four minutes. Like your she's bo- uh, the father's bowling is as uh, he's yeah. doing your way. To I mean, her. You you're need- in the whip going away in your g wagon, <laughs> and she goes, "I'm going, lad." <laughs> I mean, she lifts that one leg up. Oh, there you go. I mean, that's never gonna happen. That's no. So. To be honest, I don't really mind because it means that I don't know. It's, it, it, she's comfortable straight away. <coughs> Fighting doesn't put me off because it's completely natural. Um, I'll be honest. There are instances where you can't control it. You know, what? Like, even I, you know, you relax a bit too much. Is that like, oh, cool? <laughs> Do your sisters or mums or whatever um, are they comfortable to fart and poo or talk about it in front of you? I well, do I don't think they poo in front of me because that would just be completely weird. <laughs> that would just be weird. awkward. Not again, Mum. <laughs> well, after the first time, it's a bit weird, so she's never done it again. Mum, do you mind? Mum. Dad wants to listen. I'm like, no. Your dad wants to listen to you poo? <laughs> oh, God. To our what? podcast. Oh, God, thank God for that. But there are some There are some guys who've grown up with women who never talk about farting poo. Or not, they don't like fart in front of their brothers or their dads or whatever. I, I have a friend who doesn't pee when her dad's in the house. <laughs> Trust me. That's hilarious. So what if she's... <laughs> if she's desperate, she'll she wait. Make that, like... Yeah, back to farting. Um, what, where has, so it's normal, what's farting okay. got to do? Is it just because you let one rip or something? No. What is normal in a Bakhar household? We fart. We have competitions. My dad will fart and be like, "Who did that?" And we all look <laughs> do you know at him. I watch all really our farts are so distinct. Do you do that thing where you where you fart but you're like, "Oh, so who was that?" Yeah, my I'm, mom is I'm the so worst. glad I have uh, one toddler. He can't. Kind of, he can't defend himself. He can't speak. <laughs> Blame him. I'll be like, "Yo, Zakaria, man." Like, you're so you're so bad. Like, I act proud of him. Like, yo, Zakaria, I know it's you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> do you think it's offensive that people like um? Make jokes and chants and memes or whatever okay. about joining Islam just because most Muslims miss them. I didn't find it offensive, to be honest. Okay. Um, purely because for the first time in a very long time, mm. Muslims are being portrayed in a very, in a very positive light, and it's. Uh, it hurts for me to say that yo, like we actually something good is being said about Muslims, and in in a certain way we're being praised, as in uh, a, a Muslim is being praised for yeah, being a Muslim. I don't know. I do not think at the same time, like, it's only because he's a professional, he's a good footballer. 
Like only only the ex- excellent people are celebrated and accepted. So what about everyday Muslims? Mm. And there's such a huge um, number of Muslims in like London, for example, and they're still not. I wouldn't say accept, uh, accepted in the mainstream, but like I don't know. It, it's like the same with Nadia Hussain, the um, Great British Bake Off winner. Like she's become the poster. Yeah. It's like the good immigrant. Do you know what I mean? Like, like she's the, the post. Yeah, the poster girl. Sorry, I didn't hear. You. Yeah, yeah, like that. And it's just like only that specific individual gets some praise. praised and accepted, whereas every, everyday Muslims, everyday Asians, everyday immigrants are not celebrated on the mainstream. Not even celebrated, just accepted. They're still the other. I think we mentioned it on last week's one. Uh, really? Last week's episode where um, we talked about the Muslims that are bigged up or pushed to the forefront yeah. are the ones that are not your normal Muslim. Mm-hmm. Going to work nine to five ish, doing something. What do you, you can do it. It's fine. Oh, okay. No. So carry on. Yeah. Um, no, it does. It does. It does have a huge, huge impact. Being Muslim and mm-hmm. uh, the ones that are being celebrated. I didn't know that didn't offend me. It wasn't that didn't mm-hmm. um, bother me. I thought that was pretty good. As yeah. in, um There was actually a chant that involved him being Muslim. As in received in positive yeah. light. Um, there was there was one point made by someone else that said that I didn't think it was right purely because um, Muslims do that that little thing. So a piss head, literally, like white drinking Caucasian, alcohol and Caucasians, singing. Caucasians uh, drinking alcohol off their head were singing about a Muslim mm. being Muslim and then yeah. having the intention of saying that yo, if someone so and so does this, mm. um, I'll become a Muslim. But um, I didn't think of it in that way. That wasn't my initial thought. Yeah. But even now, I don't think that I'll be like, yeah, that's, I don't. I wouldn't say it's fine. But mm. it was, I get the jest, j- gesture and the jest behind it as well. As in, it was a bit of a joke, which is which is okay. All right? Yeah, as yeah, in, yeah. We're not hard. Muslims are not ones where you need to be, we need to be hush-hush around. As in, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, we can take true. a joke. That's it's true. fine. There are limits. There are boundaries. Everyone has their own limits and boundaries, which is fine. Mm. But yeah, I get, I get what you mean. Monopoly is back at McDonald's, and with millions of chances to win stuff like a hundred grand and McDonald's food prizes, winning feels as likely as hearing a talent show judge say, I don't like it. I love it! With that many chances to win with Monopoly at McDonald's, you'd better get peeling. Ends 1st of May. Selected items in UK restaurants from 10.30am. Subject to availability. 16 or over to play. For price conditions and other rules, visit mcdonalds.co.uk slash monopoly or see in restaurants. Okay, so let's talk about Madeleine McCann. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you guys uh, must be aware, to be honest, it's, it's all over the news. Actually, it's been over the news for like 10 years. Let's start again. Let's start again. <laughs> <laughs> Take three. Okay, let's talk about Madeleine McCann. Okay. Now she's... Oh, for Man, you just just acrimo, like, just go okay, for listen, it. Okay, listen, I'm going to go yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, before, just say, yeah, let's talk about Mali McCann. Where's okay, let's talk about 10 years now. Right. Okay, let's talk about Madeline McCann then. Um, now, it's sort of 11 years since she went missing and she went abroad with her. <laughs> 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 ah, he laughed. He smiled. Yeah. He smiled. You didn't even let me what? laugh. He smiled. <laughs> One eternity later. Uh, take 37. I think I deformed your cushion. Okay, let's talk about Madeleine McCann, right? It's been about 11 years now since she, she went missing when she went abroad with her, with her mum and dad and her brother and sister, I believe, uh, little kids. Uh, twin, yeah, in Portugal. Um, and their parents... Her parents actually left her to Madeline. go out dinner. You know, so they gave her... They gave her a sleeping pill or like a sleeping I'm not so sure we go through it yeah <clears throat> yeah so it was, um, parents Kate and Jerry one on holiday with Madeline yep two twin siblings yeah okay they were two years old at the time um, and some family friends and their children as well I think that's another interesting point of that story as well because it wasn't just them as in there were other people that knew them or knew Madeline in that same area so the thing is she and like you just mentioned Madeline and the two other children were put to sleep at around eight thirty in, in an apartment, and then their parents and their friends went off, went off to eat in the evening. And then when the parents came back to check on the children for the evening, uh, Madeline was wasn't there. Okay, and this was around ten o'clock, and yeah, after that, <coughs> in suit. Okay. but she was given some sort of uh, sleeping. Was she though, or was, was that some sort of like no, she was? She was. They used to give her they, the the parents because they were both doctors, right? They gave because. <laughs> They obviously wanted to go out. Mm. They gave them something to. You don't do that. That's number true. one. You don't need that, the kids. I mean, 
You don't leave your kids. We don't want to parent shame here. I mean, Joey and Kate McCann are obviously exceptions because of all the up things they've done since she's gone missing. But like the whole, they at the end of the day, they were doctors. It was their kids. They must have known what they it's were not doing. Parent came in to be honest. It's, you don't leave your kids when you're going abroad. You don't leave your kids. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't personally, but like. They must have. They're intel, intel, intelligent, you know, intellectual people. They wouldn't leave. I mean, I'm not trying to excuse it, but what I'm saying is, had the rest of all the other horrible stuff had not happened, it would have just been a very normal night for them to have left their children. I'm guessing it's like a normal thing for them. But again, I mean? it's not. It's um, not good for that to be normal. You don't leave your kids abroad um, by themselves. That's true. I know. Uh, so yeah. It's not shaming. <clears throat> it's just something you don't do. It's for the safety of your children. I wouldn't do it, and I, mean, I would yeah, I think either. most reasonable parents. Um, I'm not trying to shame them, but it's just mm. it's it's really silly to do that because mm. something like what happened could happen. Yeah. So no, I don't think I would ever do that to my children. Well, I, I know I wouldn't do that to yeah, my, no, my I don't children. Yeah, I would either. Um, but no, so I'm pretty sure that, um, she took the the parents gave her something to to sleep. Mm. It's interesting though because it was her and her two uh, siblings. siblings. So, mm. But it was only her. Her Madeline that went sort of missing. Mm. So if it was a sort of a it's strange, if it yes, was a kidnapper, don't you mm. think that they would have taken all three, or do you think it was just like no. grab the first one? If it was a kidnapper, why didn't take the oldest one? Why didn't take the smaller three. one? That's easy then, to carry. Th- that could be telling of how many there, there were. Maybe one person can't take three kids, very exactly, like, without yeah. being noticed. Yeah, so you're right. Maybe so it, could, it could be that, or it could be like what you said, Abid earlier, about the parents killed. Yeah, Maddie, yeah. but you, you can explain that your theory. Yeah, my theory is I do kind of support this whole medication thing. Yeah. Uh, I think when the mum came back and found that Madeline wasn't responding to right. something, something on the woman's eyes, I think mm. she realised, oh crap, I need to do something about it. Um, so yeah, I think she might have reported them missing and then when yeah. everyone was across town trying to yeah. find Madeline also like stuff, this, they yeah. might have done with it. And they're very intelligent parents. Like yeah, They would know the true. right way to kill the child and get rid of it and the kind of story to concoct or whatever. Well, it's interesting you say that because a lot of people think um, that Maddie was the victim of her own parents. Um, one of the things that they found in one of the hired cars of the parent of the parents, they found um, I think it was a sniffer dog actually that found <coughs> some blood in the boot. Mm. Uh, interesting. I think that got thrown out for some reason. It got thrown out because the the guy that was sort of the lead detective, he was hell bent in proving that it was the parents. And because he was so hellbent in that, like he was trying to get rid of all the other leads, and I don't know, I think he messed up the messed up the investigation. Something happened where he messed up the investigation. But anyway, so that's sort of that's sort of what happened eleven years ago. Hmm. Really, really tragic. Do you, but sorry. eleven years on, we still haven't found it, hmm. and we've just got a, a a new inquiry has been made. The new research has been conducted. Basically, they are they're putting more money into finding her. Eleven years on now. As far as I'm aware, there's no leads. There's no leads at all. Yeah. So what's made them want to? They've already spent eleven million pounds. Yeah. Eleven million pounds, a lot of money, into find, into sort of the inquiry and finding out what happened to Maddie. Now, at what point do we say kind of enough's not enough, enough is enough, but that's a bit harsh because yeah, obviously a parent's so child is missing. Yeah. But what point do we say we've done enough or we haven't found her? Yeah. It's really, really unlikely we'll find her. There's other millions of kids that are missing as well. Why don't we sort yeah, of you're right. redistribute the money it's, somewhere else it's, where it'd be better spent? It's very. It's funny you said that. Have you, I don't know if you guys have read um, the book um, Owen Jones wrote. It's called Chads. It's basically about how Maddie McCann's new, the whole story was like one of the biggest stories in the last 10 years, isn't it? Yeah. And it's still people are still talking about it. It's still happening, whatever. Um, there was another case in the last 10 years. I've actually forgotten her name. That's kind of telling of how like unimportant it became. Of a black girl. That was um, kidnapped, but uh, and then basically Owen Jones was comparing the media um, representation of the two. They were both very similar. That kid must have been—I've uh, really I've forgotten her name—but she was about eight years old. She was kidnapped from her home, um, and whatever. But basically, the newspapers weren't going crazy about it. They weren't like talking about it as such. And it's it's the fact that Maddie was at the end of the day from a white, very middle class, you know, rich, whatever, family. And that's She's true. photogenic as well. Yeah, and she's kind of the blonde hair, blue eyes. She's the ideal, like, cute, innocent child, isn't she? British child. British as well. And the fact that it happened on foreign soil as well, that made it so much more interesting. There's been books about it, so many, like, newspaper analysis. I think like, there's a Netflix documentary coming up. On- if it hasn't, it definitely will be. 
But but it's, it's like interesting how um, the parents they set up like a pond or something, right? Yeah. yeah. And do you know how many days after they set up the pond? I think it was like the next day or two days. Twelve after. days. Twelve days. Twelve wow. days after the experience, they set up a fund, a massive fund. We're not talking anything. There's a lim- They made it into a limited company and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so they call it the Madeleine's Madeleine's Fund. <coughs> semicolon. Leaving no stone unturned. Limited. On 15th of May 2007, uh, 12 days after the experiment, uh, it's reported that over 80 million people have visited the fund's website. Um, How much have they made? Because I know for I know that they paid off their mortgage through that fund. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's just coming up as a few things. Um, it's re- received massive donations from people like J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling actually. Um, J.K. Rowling, mate. Rowling. We can say both. You guys are weird. Okay, fine. That's just okay. So. Anyways, <laughs> so we all hate basically Maddie's parents is what we're saying. It would be well, such. I, don't hate them, I think. But I just think this is so. It it's very have, like. It's very it smells. It smells a it's, lot. Yeah, it does. And no one's bothered to check down. Considering how much they've benefited and the fact that they've got their own books out and whatever, and I also read somewhere that they'd been paying the major newspapers to. <laughs> To have stories oh, of them, to be, to be, yeah, to always be in the papers. I can't remember if it was um the Sun. Uh, it was one of the like the tabloid papers, and they'd been paying a lot of money just to be relevant, just to be in the papers regularly. There's also another thing. About. Yeah, there's another thing also. When the when they when Maddie was initially sort of reported as missing, mm. um, obviously the Portuguese, Portuguese police tried to get as much information as possible, mm. so they started talking to the mum who who'd last seen Maddie. And her responses were really, really telling to the questions that, that they were asked. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if you can sort of pull this up, the questions that were asked, but it's it's funny how she, a lot of them, she answered no comment. Mm. So some of the questions are so like, like you wouldn't think a lot about it, mm. but she still said no comment. And for someone who's just like, sort of lost their kid, not lost their kid, but their kid's gone missing. Mm. Why would you answer no comment? I'm surely you'd try and mm. answer as many sort of questions as possible to she, find out. Yeah. Um, she um, refused to answer 48 questions. 48? Have you got any of the questions that she course, refused to ask? Um, shall go, I'll go through a quick transcript. So, it says here, uh, Madeleine McCann refused to answer 48 questions from Portuguese. Madeleine police. McCann, dude. She wasn't there, mate. Sorry. Um, <laughs> case <laughs> solved. I've been just solved the case. Madeleine McCann, we found her. We found her. So it's reported that Kate McCann, uh, mother of Madeleine McCann, refused to answer four year questions after Portuguese from pol- Portuguese police. Um, so if we go for a quick. Ah, here are the questions. On May 13th, so May 3rd, 2007, around 10 pm, when you entered the apartment, what did you see? What did you do? Where did you look? What did you touch? And she said no comment to that. She didn't even answer them. She's not even uh, trying. No question. wonder they can't find her. But to be fair, there, if that's the first question they asked, if she's completely sort of... It's 47 more. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's 47, yeah. it's 47 more, but if that's the first question they ask, then I'm sure... Like, oh, this is interesting. Second question. Did you search inside the master bedroom wardrobe? She replied that she wouldn't answer. That is telling. That's like, why you not answer this? Guys, if you're listening in Portugal, could you guys go check that wardrobe? She could still be in there. She could still be in there. <laughs> she, she's probably, probably playing hide and seek. Uh, she went to Narnia. Oh, okay, that's a bad joke. I'm sorry. Really bit insensitive. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think? She's though, still highly champion. <laughs> you need to get rid of this. You dare the hell out of this. We're going to get sacked from our job straight away. <laughs> <laughs> what job? Yeah, we're making light of a we very a lot serious of situation. Um, have you guys watched the documentary of Amanda Knox on Net on Netflix? Uh, oh, not the good. documentary. Is that but Foxy Knoxy. Yeah. That one. See oh. that again. It's a bit more essential. Um, uh, do you think it's the fact of being fact on foreign soil? Did you just say sexualized there for a second? So, then, uh, yeah, she's, she's sexy, but me, don't. It's nah, not no, 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 she's crazy. And it's all no. the media hype as well. It really doesn't help. And I think the, the media was so desperate to find a killer, and she was the natural choice because she was, you know, there. Yeah, so I didn't watch the documentary, but surely all the so evidence suggested it was her and Raphael, or whatever the guy's name is. The Italian dude, right? Yeah. So, I mean, to everybody who doesn't know what it's about, basically this woman was on holiday in Italy with her friend or whatever, her roommate. And um, one night there was three of them. Her friend's boyfriend, was it? Yeah. They were having Amanda, fun. the friend, and the friend's boyfriend were there. And then, like, the friend was brutally murdered. Right? Yeah. But Wait, wasn't it Amanda's boyfriend, Raphael? Someone's boyfriend was there. Yeah. But anyway, so Amanda was like convicted because she obviously it's her home. Who else would have got in? They were all like off their head or whatever. 
and there was like a really brutal murder, like stabbed however how many times. Or yeah, yeah, something ridiculous like that. And the and because it was such a big story, and it was because the fact that they were in Italy and she's an American resident, it became such a big thing. Like, oh, the Italian, you know, whatever. It was sensationalized so much, and the media were like it was pressuring. British didn't. Yeah, she was British. Yeah, no, the the victim. The, the was victim British. was British. Yeah, so it was like kind of an international story, and the media was so desperate for a a um, perpetrator, they kind of were forced to draw the conclusions towards Amanda and they kind of they arrested her and she went to jail for like two years didn't she she did but, yeah. to be honest, but they like, didn't like do a, a thorough job it's like, like it's like with Maddie I think what happened was like there was so much there was so, like a desperation and an urgency to get to find her to like get it right whatever that I think maybe evidence was overlooked that wardrobe was not checked and like it's I think like, the media hype does not help in any, in any situation like that it just makes it so much harder to follow the clues even if it's right in front of you yeah, but Noxie did it, didn't she? No, she. I mean, she's been released. She's been released. It she was. Did it. it was. Well, I mean, that's all the evidence was points towards her. No, there was a third. There was third. Um, yeah, it's not. Not, saying that, the DNA, not saying that. No, that she wasn't. That there wasn't someone else involved. But I think she was involved. She, she had. I don't know. I don't know because because uh, at the end, I think they decided it was this other dude. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, but it was. It was they, this black guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they, there wasn't a black guy, right? They didn't find him. They did. Oh, did they find they him? Find, they found him. They, and they found charged him and they charged Raffaello as well. And they charged... It could have been all three of them. It, I mean, it very well could have been all three of them. But I think the fact that there was another person in the room or whatever, they didn't really look into that too much, which is what they should have done straight away. But I think this question is quite interesting. They're quite intimidating as well. Even I'll be like, what the hell? Yeah. So, um. How, when was she asked these questions? Straight away. Straight after. Straight after. Straight after. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, fact, the fact that she didn't answer them, that could be telling them, like, so many things, but at the same time, it could be the fact oh. that she was overwhelmed. That's what I said. That's what I thought. I think it's the first question that they asked, and she might be like. Yeah, she wasn't straight away. It wasn't straight away. Or maybe it's one thing um, to tell the police, but to tell an entire audience of, you know, they Amanda, you know, so you can't. Hold on a minute. When was the date she was abducted? She was abducted, abducted in May. And the interview was done in September. Oh, that's April, a few May, June, July, August. Few months. That's a whole couple of months. She she refused to answer these questions. Mm. She had she'd had time to think about it as well. Um, and a lot of them, yeah, then, then lot of them a bit, are yeah. about the blood stains that you mentioned as well. Um, so she couldn't. Yeah, she could. She didn't answer the question. She didn't. And surely, man, come on, these heart questions. You have something towards it. She refused to answer the question. Did you work every day? That's so dumb. The reason why I bring up Madeleine McCann is because they just found out they put more money into it. Uh, there's a little statistic stack that I read on Twitter, <laughs> the little source Twitter for this one, um, that reports that uh, the same £11 million have been pumped into the finding, investigation, sorry, of Madeleine, Madeleine McCann. Uh, that's apparently the same amount that's, that was provided for the 9 11 oh, investigation. Wow. So, oh, wow. First time I've ever heard that. that. <laughs> you know what that means? <laughs> yeah. Much shock, so well. <laughs> so much shock. <laughs> much <Whoa>. shock. <laughs> dog, <laughs> the dog one. Stop laughing at the serious things. Um, but, no, but to be fair, to be fair, nine eleven was less of a mystery than Maddie McCann. Yeah, Bush they did know. It. I mean, I know it's yeah, a conspiracy. We know Bush did it. It's a conspiracy, lying. yeah. But like, there was less to Bush investigate. Do you think Bush did he it? He definitely had some input. Yeah. There's too many questions unanswered. At the same time, I don't want to. I don't want to commit fully. <laughs> I don't want to yeah, because imagine we find out the truth in 10 years and we're like... Thanks. Madeline Oops. actually got swapped. <laughs> no, I'm talking about 9-11. 9-11. Where were you during 9-11? I just came back. Well, I was primary in school. school. We were, we were, we were all primary school, school. Yes. I know. We were primary school. Um, yeah, it happened while we were in school. So yeah, I, we had an assembly. 1.30. Yeah. You had assembly. I, we didn't even like clock. None of us no, clocked. No, we no, just went I home. Clocked, I clocked when, it? I, when I got home. Things I did not care, man. I was trying to tune into my CBBC, watch Mona the, ha- really watch Mona the Vampire. Mona the Vampire. No, but literally, literally every single channel was um, full of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full of so, mm. so we went what year two? I tuned in to watch Arthur and stuff, and next thing you know, I see the Pentagon on fire. Yeah. It's Haram, brother. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Arthur, Arthur, Arthur hey. there's so many physics that don't make sense. Have you seen a picture of him wearing headphones? Where <laughs> 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 There's usually head- <laughs> wearing headphones, yeah. but his ear is actually up here. Oh my god. <laughs> he's listening through his cheeks. <laughs> no, he's... What's that? Oh, the... Do you know what animal he is? 
Aardvark? Yeah. yeah. Does anybody know what the fuck is? Aardvark. I don't know. Does an Aardvark walk on four legs? <laughs> Oh, man. Arthur was messed up. It was his boy's name, Buster. Trauma. Buster. Team England, powered by a nation. End power. Proud sponsors of Commonwealth Games England and their official anthem. Search Empower Team England to hear the track now. Um, I was also in school. Well, I didn't really, we didn't have no assembly like you. We, um, we, we actually care about the world. Nah, we were like more worrying about, about if we're going to get to watch our favourite TV shows. So, um, no, I went home and I tried to, uh, I think my mum was feeding me. How old was I? Hold on, let me just think. <laughs> yeah. He was 16. <laughs> I was, <laughs> no, I, I don't I, know how old we are. <laughs> Um, I was young, but yeah, me and sister were ready to um, to eat, and and then we tried to watch TV, and every single channel was full of the the two towers, the mm-hmm. twin towers, um, and I was like, oh, sake, man, I want to watch a thing. I, I guess even when you're that little, you wouldn't know how serious that is. Yeah, but I was like, I want yeah, to watch we this. we never know the magnitude of what it's going to cause. We you know. we did. I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen in the future, but we had a special school assembly. We were all together. All the teachers were like, they looked really stressed, and the head teacher was crying. We were just like, why is this waste of my crying? Um, but yeah, so the head teacher started crying, and that's when we knew like the teacher wouldn't cry in front of us unless it was something serious. And I think we even went home early that day. I don't know. Yeah, because it happened at one thirty. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, no, it happened at three, right? It was in New York. They were five hours behind us, so it would have been... Two o'clock. Yeah, two o'clock. Yeah. Because remember, it would have taken some time for the Was that to nine o'clock? It, it was nine yeah. o'clock, uh, New York time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, I've got um, family in America, and they've told us how what they experienced. They were in high school at the time, and then they found out. And a lot of the kids' parents were at work in the Twin Towers. So obviously a chaos at the school. Um, they all got let, ho- let go early. They were all like running around like headless chicken around like the school and you know, premises, and they all ran home. Um, but luckily, no one I knew was around. But they just didn't know what was happening. It was just like a lot of chaos. Oh, but yeah, like, I guess no one knew at the time the impact that it was going to have. Yeah. Like, to and this then, day, even. Look at the domino effect you had. So, yeah. you had 9-11, uh, Bin Laden, or Afghanistan, mm. Taliban, we were all blamed. Mm. Um, that then launched Bush to coax Tony Blair into yeah, having an illegal yeah, yeah. war. Um, the weapon of uh, so the much search much. for the weapons of mass destruction, which mm. strangely enough, guess what? Never existed. They never found him. Mm. Um, Saddam Hussein got hanged. There was that. Like, they found him. Yeah, and that was quite. That was quite. Yeah, not even just it? on a political level. Like after that, all the Islamophobia it was rife. Yeah. But like also, like Sikhs were getting targeted, Hindus, whatever. If you're if you were brown in America, you had a hard hard time, and. Um, like, that's when a lot of tension between the Muslim and Sikh community, I think, started happening in yeah. America. Because they were like, we're being thrown under the bus. Mm. We're being thrown under the bus for something like Muslims yeah. supposedly did. So that started tension between... Do you know how I learned about that? My name is Khan. Dude. Really? Dude, that was my source! No, was like, we my name just... is Khan. It's a, good, it's a good film, man. Is that one of Shah Rukh Khan? Yeah. Shah Rukh Khan, yes. He's, he did so well in that film, right? He did. He did His really autism well. was a bit, I think... Overacted, but but well, why was it overacted? That some autistic kids are like that. So some also autistic people are like that. I don't know. He has uh, Asperger's. Yeah, but people have. I know people, people are different. different people are different. I don't know, but I've never. I don't know. I'm not. An you're expert. just so you're just basing it on. Uh, Come just, on, they again, did Bollywoodify this is, it. This is a journalist being offended again. Oh, his autism was a bit. Uh, uh, was I didn't like. I didn't I, I, ha- I like literally have researched autism and. Like, I've spoken to people with Asperger's. Oh, Auti- right. He doesn't have high functioning autism. Shah Khan in the story. That's different. He does. He, he's he's does really he? clever. Yeah. No, no, no. Asperger's no, no, is a no, form no. of autism. Yeah, I know. But the the there's levels to it. There's, yeah. He what he, they I feel like they've collated the two very different phenomena and like they've like mixed him up a bit. Like Asperger's yeah, is really no, particular. No but he he seems to have high functioning. I don't know. I, I I don't know enough about it to make a statement like that. But I, it just felt a bit mixed up. But I guess for the sake of the film, they had to exaggerate. You know what I mean? Yeah, Bollywood if I. Yeah. True. Um, but I think, that li- I think this links in quite well to what happened yeah. earlier this week, isn't it? In the Muslim day. It was on. I do find it a little Thursday. Bit was it? Oh, well, isn't it, it Tuesday? Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, sorry. I will put my days mixed up again. Mm-hmm. Um, did you guys um? Did any of the family members tell you to kind of be careful? 
I got oh. the WhatsApp messages. Okay, so yeah, was it stuff. like serious? Um, um, I honestly, again, I think it comes down to where you are. We live in massively populated Muslim communities. Um, we're in London, for goodness sake. We're in East London. Also, massive amount of ethnic minorities, um, Muslims in general, and religious minorities as well. Mm-hmm. So okay. I think we didn't feel threatened, yeah. let's say. But obviously, if you were living in a small town in mm-hmm. Wales, mm-hmm. where you're literally one of, what, maybe four families in a whole mm. uh, village, yeah. then you'd feel yeah. a bit threatened or yeah. a little bit on edge. Yeah. And I think generally, like, I mean, men wouldn't be victims yeah. of Islamophobic attacks. Well, they haven't been. Um, it's usually women, quite vulnerable women, yeah. wearing a headscarf, burqa, niqab, uh, the ones that can't speak English, can't defend themselves. Um, or if they're by themselves or whatever, those are usually the ones that are targeted. So I imagine they would have had a lot more fear, and guess, I'm guessing that they, majority of them, would have stayed at home mm. um, for fear of being attacked. Uh, I mean, as as a Muslim woman who who's not visibly Muslim, I don't think I had much to fear, and I also kind of you're not visibly Muslim. I, will, I mean, if you saw me down the street, people might not assume I'm a Muslim straight away. Oh, hundred percent, you're Muslim. That's my guess. I guess that's because you hung around enough people is like to know it. But, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but you're brown, and brown people are Muslims. <laughs> to white people, <laughs> yeah, it's like there's no there's no Hindu, there's no Sikh. You're just Muslim if you're brown. That's true. That's true. Um, but I mean, I've I've people people that I've hung out with, they haven't assumed I'm Muslim. But I mean, I don't know. Fair enough. Each their own, I guess. Yeah. Would you say? Would you say she looks that's Muslim? Thing, yeah. Let's discuss. She is Muslim. Muslim. What she said is, and I've hung around enough Muslim women to know that. Well, Muslim women might. They might not look at it at first, but you know what I mean. There's mannerisms. <laughs> and things like yeah, do you know? There's a funny story, right? My um, uh, my sister went to my sisters went to Lanzarote um, on holiday, and then they ch- were checking into the hotel, and the hotel clerk was saying to them, "Sort of, what's your what's your nationality? We need to write it down." And they were like, oh, it's British. Like, in the proper, typical, most British, like, typical British accent. Oh, it's British. And the clerk was like, no, 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 what's your nationality? And my sister again repeated, no, we're Muslim, uh, not Muslim, we're, we're British. That happens a lot. Um, and then she's like, no, no, you don't understand. They're what's your nationality? And then they, she just wrote down Indian. <laughs> <laughs> she just wrote down Indian. Why did she Bangladesh? Like, Bangladeshi? No, because my sister didn't say anything. She just wrote Indian. Oh, the lady did. The well, la- I think yeah. you and your sister did. Was the lady wrote Indian <laughs> without even like my sister saying anything. And I would have been like, you flipping. Flip. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. You flipping flip. I would have said that. <laughs> exactly to the T of but, you flipping but flip. To, to a lot of, but to a lot of foreigners, they don't see enough uh, dual heritage people. Dual heritage. Do you know what I mean? Like, they, for example, if you go to a village in Italy, they don't have a lot of brown Italians. Mm. So the natural guess wouldn't be you're a brown British person. It's true. So it's like when I but all even, even even when you go to like parts of Asia. When I went to India, I went to India with a bunch of um, white girls and Asian girls, and I could see the could, there was a visible difference in how we were treated. Did the Asian as did, opposed to how yeah. they were treated? First of all, they were treated they much perv- better. Did the did the Asians perv- yeah. on the white white girls? Yeah. Because the Asians have some sort of perception that white girls are like loose or like sexually, you know, free or whatever. But not that. Yeah, sorry, what? But um, no, but even oh, even no, in oh, terms no. of sexually free. <laughs> no, it's a thing. Ba- I'm sorry, that's a brilliant. Sexually place. free, <laughs> <laughs> sexually free. <laughs> no, no, this is a thing. This is a real thing. Because I, I don't know why. That's why a lot of grooming cases, like the Watchdale, um, Newcastle sex rings and stuff, uh, they target like uh, Quite white. Innocent. Working Very class, clean. vulnerable women, and because they have the idea, oh, white girls will have sex with anyone, so they they they're easy to prey on, they're easy to prey on, and that's why they do it with these women. But anyway, so it, back in India, the the white people were treated a lot better than we were. But my point was, a lot of the people there that are not necessarily educated or whatever, they were they found it confusing to receive us because we looked like them. But we didn't sound like them. We had this like British accent, and we had this completely lived experience. So it was for them. It was really like a confusing thing to navigate. So like, equally, like I was saying earlier, like if you haven't been exposed to that kind of like dual heritage or whatever, I guess you wouldn't. That's not the norm to you. So you would assume you're either one or the other. You can't be British and brown. You have to be from India if you're brown, or if you're if you're white, then yeah, exactly. So if you haven't been exposed to it, I guess that's just. Okay, cool. Um, no, but the thing is, do you know what's funny? Because um, I went into work, right? 
and um uh, all of this stuff was being sort of banned around on Twitter. I think it was more Twitter. Yeah. It was more sort of on Twitter than it actually social was a thing. Right, yeah, social really media made it. Social media made it bigger than it actually was. Obviously, it's not. That, I'm not saying that it's made up because it's obviously true, but I don't think it was as big as it was meant to be. What, what, when you say it, what are you referring to? The the um, Punisher Muslim Day thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I went into work and I said to I said to all my white colleagues because I work in Kent, so I work with all the white people, right? Well. I work with white people, but some some Indians as well, but no Muslims. Okay, um, and I went into work and I said to them, "Do you know what today is?" Um, and they were like, "No, what is it?" Like they they were no they had no idea what it was. And it's I said, of April. And then today I said, "It's Punished Muslim Day," and the first thing that they did was give me a hug, and that was like, "Oh man, I'm so like, I was I wasn't I wasn't expecting that to be oh, honest." Cool. Yeah, I you were setting a few jokes here and there. I, I wasn't expecting a joke. I was just like, you know what today is, because I wasn't like, I didn't know if they knew what it was, mm. and they just gave me a hug, and I was like, Do you, I mean, I don't know if I'm just a hater, but do you not find that really patronizing? I don't find that patronizing at all. Okay. But what patronizing? Getting a hug from some because they were like, yeah. no, because they were shocked. They yeah. were shocked by that. And they, they were like, that. I'm so sorry, and then yeah. they hugged me, and I was like. Oh. But why would it be? Why? This is what I mean. This is the whole thing about being offended again. Fine, I'm not, offended no, by I'm it. I'm not offended by a hug. I, I want to know why she thinks that's patronizing. Okay. I'm like, I don't get. I don't, I don't get, get that. See, this is the thing that that line of thinking would have even gone through past my head. Would it have gone through your head? No, it didn't. I thought. I genuinely thought. You know what? I think if, at least they care. If my colleagues hu- colleagues hug, hug me, I probably would be like, oh my god, yeah, that's so nice. I wouldn't be like, oh my god, it's a patronizing get off me. But then I feel like my second thought would be like. So, I feel like I'm being victimized. Uh, I feel like I'd be I'm being victimized, and I don't know. I, I have this whole thing where like the the only reason that the, your colleagues are hugging you is because it, I mean they want to comfort you, which is fair enough. But at the same time, they're trying to like humanize you, they're trying to be like, oh, Akmal, you, you know, you're nor- you're normal, you're one of us. Like, why are these horrible people trying to punish Muslims? It just it just feels like they're trying to humanize someone, like, like a group of people that should have already. We shouldn't have even. We shouldn't even have to. Yeah, but the thing is, I see what you mean. This. Also, also the thing is, all these uh, like positive reactions to Muslims, love a Muslim, hug a Muslim, whatever. It's all reserved for one day. It's kind of like theatrics. The next day, no one was hugging Muslims. No one was like, oh, yeah, but that's the thing. They them. don't need to hug a Muslim the next day. Should, should we bring like Abdul? From first episode. Abdullah, <laughs> his name is Abdullah. Abdullah, Abdullah. Abdullah. No, no, but the like, thing Abdullah is, Abdullah is okay. I don't, I don't think they need to hug a Muslim you know? every, any other day. Huh? It's because that day is specifically being marked yeah, out by racists to, to, to target Muslims. So, on purpose, they try to counteract that with, with love and with compassion. Compassion, exactly. So, I get. I'll be honest. You get his I'm point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I don't get the, the I am playing it. devil's advocate. I yeah. don't think I would. I don't think you are. I think you actually. I think you are actually <laughs> finding it patronizing. Yeah, I don't find it the least bit patronizing. Seems quite sincere. But yeah. <sighs> I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. It's okay. It's an open forum. We all have feelings over here, except <laughs> Abid. He's heartless. Um, <laughs> <laughs> made of stone. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I I had no qualms with them arguing me because I it's thought. It's like. You no, know, because because the reason why is because. Um, the way I said it to them, I was, I wanted to find out what they would think about it. Number one, because they know I'm Muslim. And um, number two, um, I was, I was shocked by, I wasn't really shocked because I, I didn't expect them to do anything else other than like be disgusted by this day. Um, but I was shocked that they hugged me and they were like, it's okay, stuff like that. Cause I wasn't expecting that at all. And it actually really upset me that they were hugging me as well. Um, because I was like, oh man, like, it didn't, it only hit home then that there's actually some people that hate us that much, that hate Muslims that much, that they actually reserve the whole day for it. Yeah, my my mum actually told me in the morning as well. She said to me, she said to me, oh, don't go out anywhere same, because same. Um, because there's. A, I was well, like, how do you know? I was like, how does my mum know? Yeah, um, look, it, literally, because it was on like on like Asian um, TV channels, like the news it? and whatever. It was circulated a lot. What's up? Even yeah. in America, even Trevor Noah. No, America knows Hassan about America. Not, have you Did seen you see? this little thing? Did that you was see? funny. That's that was funny. hilarious. Yeah. It's true though. We get punished every day. Yeah, exactly. It's not just one day. <laughs> and it's, like, it's, not, it's not like Islamophobia was going to go away the next day and we're free to go about our lives. We didn't talk about London life crime and transracial stuff, which we don't believe in anyway. Transracial? What's transracial? It's basically people... Obviously, we know what transgender means. It's when people feel really uncomfortable. Um, they feel like they're born in the wrong body. Mm. So they change genders, which I think is fair enough. 
but there are now people that claim they're not in the right race. So they're trying to change that. God, so, someone's not the wrong race. So someone says so that they're black example, and they're white. There's one man. <laughs> this one man thinks he's, he's a white man. And he thinks he's Filipino. And now he drives around, <laughs> he drives around a purple tuk-tuk. And he, oh, thinks, God. he thinks he's Filipino. <laughs> I wish I'd laugh because they might be in next. No, but to be honest, um, listen, that's a load of, that's a load of stuff. Um, um, and like Rachel Dolezal or whatever she thinks she's black um, she but does she think she's black because she, she just she pretending to be black no, she's no, pretending she to be black she fully her both, her patient, her, both her parents are Caucasian yeah but was she pretending but to be black but she got black kids or does she think she's, she's got mixed race black she, kids because she has thing, isn't it? Um, she has a black husband I, yeah I think she's fetishized black culture and she's like she wants to be a part of it her kids are black her husband's black so she wants to be black didn't she? Um, she actually has she changed blonde, her hair. straight hair. She changed her hair color. Now she's got curly hair and she's got dark brown, like brown skin, and she actually thinks she's black. So she's yeah. crazy. Do you know what's interesting? Do you know last week when we were talking about um, there were these radical feminists that turfs. I actually found out what they stand for. What they stand for? Um, they are trans exclusionary radical feminists. Oh wow! Uh, do they? It is self sort of. Uh, yeah, I mean. Any true turf wouldn't really identify as one, but um, they. So I, I, but they are. It's a bit like Nazis. So, yeah, they. Mm, yeah, but they're so they're so against it. Like I don't think they would even object because they know that they're against. Um, well, it's not. That, it's not that they're against trans people. They're against trans women being recognised as, as women said last time, right? in, in the own you right. You said last time that um, that they'll never have the feeling of a period. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you sounded you sounded really um, sort of strong in your opinion against that. Do you well, believe in that? Well, a, a man turning into a woman isn't going to know what a period is like. But um, but do you, would have... you put that against a transsexual woman? I'm not against transgender. I'm not against people changing their sex because I think it's, not, it's to each their own. Yeah. If you feel so uncomfortable and you feel like you were truly born in the world, but are you well, holding it that's... against them? So no, I'm not. Hold, 100% are you holding that they've never had a period against them? I wouldn't say I am. Well, first of all, I'm not, I don't identify as a turf. Um, but then you sound but, quite sort of strong. But it's true, it. though. It's true, isn't it? A man who's turned into one will never experience period. Mm. It's scientifically true. But, but yeah, you're right? right. But does that what what does that quantify? But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Period. Does that quantify? I don't women? define a woman just by period, though. So I wouldn't say that they're not they're any less of a woman. But I would still say they don't know what that experience is like. That is that important in becoming a woman. No, it's not. I wouldn't say oh, it is important, but. And I would accept them as they. I would accept them as a woman. But for example, Caitlyn Jenner was, um, she was voted Woman, woman of the Year oh God. for like some magazine, like some big magazine. People magazine, thought, whatever. Maybe, yeah. yeah, I thought that was really wrong because what they had was a chance to celebrate a strong woman, and they gave it to a transgender woman who. Who would you have given it to then? Any, literally any woman. Well, give me one example. Who, uh, I don't know, Malala for. For example, but she's already been woman of the year. Has she? Yeah. Oh, she's not. Okay. No, but you see what I mean. Like, why uh, woman of the year is a celebration of an underappreciated group as it is, right? Mm. Why give it to someone who's been a woman for five minutes? Why not someone who's genuinely defeated or trying to de- defeat stereotypes and but sexism she defeated, since she they were defeated little? Stereotypes of she was a very privileged, nah, lesbian, common, rich white male. Who had the means to go ahead? You can't hold yeah. that against someone. I'm not trying. To, I'm not saying we should like. I'm not against Caitlyn Jenner. I'm saying Again, she shouldn't. I'm not, I don't she think shouldn't be put on a platform that should have been reserved uh, as a chance to celebrate a woman, a woman by birth. So this, she should never be. No. So I'm saying don't don't put transgender people on a pedestal, right? But then surely... they should be accepted just as any ordinary ordinary person. Yeah. Don't like. Yeah, you're they right. Should, they shouldn't be made to feel special. No, but yeah. you're right. If, if they're, they're not special. Time, they're not. They're not the they're the same time, to be equal. Yeah. They're fine for At the same time, it's like what you say about females, women, more men. No, but it's, it, as in like oh, man. we're the same. We're the same. So why are we putting women on a pedestal? But the reason why the the trans, transgenders are put on a pedestal is because they're trying to highlight sort of social injustice. Yeah, but don't. If it was like a transgender magazine and they're like transgender person of the year, fair enough, put them on, on that platform. But, but this, there is no thing this, as transgender of the year. So and then maybe this should be. But what I'm saying is, this is it was an opportunity to celebrate a woman that's been breaking glass ceilings, that's been making movements, doing bits, or whatever. 
and yet they completely washed over all the achievements of other women from birth who've been fighting stereotypes and sexism mm. since they were little and giving it to someone who doesn't still quite have, have have has experienced Being what it means to be a woman and especially because of the short amount of time that he, she was she has been was a woman at the time why would you I, I don't why would you take away the opportunity I don't I don't I don't necessarily disagree with you either yeah. but um I have I have an issue with that specific with that certain incident in a sense because yeah uh, sorry they haven't been a woman transgender trans- woman for long enough to be appreciated as a woman um, maybe maybe if they had a transgender woman who or a group of transgender women who have been doing something mm. maybe uh, breaking barriers like I said bre- breaking glass even mm. she was sex. breaking barriers how though what exactly was she doing because She's like a role model for transgender people. Oh, come on, I don't think she is. is. She's not. She a lot of trans people are against her because they're like, "Wow, you're raise, you're praising this woman, this uh, very highly privileged rich man who has all the means to do whatever the hell he wants. You're praising that person it, and not recognizing everyday trans that they that they get killed so much, especially in America, just for being trans, for wanting to be trans." And Caitlyn Jenner has first of all done nothing for that community. Also, she was like she backed like Trump and stuff. So it was. She's no role. She's not a role model to any. I wouldn't say any true. I don't. Know. Any other thoughts? No. Well, I guess.